Frankenstein is a novel written by Mary Shelley in 1818, exactly 77 years before the events of Hunt Showdown. It tells the story of a scientist named Victor Frankenstein who creates life in his laboratory. His creation is a monster. Frankenstein's monster is a grotesque, enormously strong creature assembled from the parts of other humans. The story of Frankenstein is as iconic as it gets and has had a huge influence on literature and pop culture, even spawning a complete horror genre that has been explored by countless films. I love the Frankenstein story for obvious reasons. It was revolutionary for its time, it pioneered new grounds of sci-fi, and the ideas and themes are still relevant today. So what does any of this have to do with Hunt Showdown? You see, Frankenstein's monster serves as the basis for my favorite thought experiment in Hunt. If I was the Victor Frankenstein of Hunt Showdown, and I could select the parts of other hunters and sew them together to create the strongest hunter imaginable, how would I do it? Well, first, I would identify a skill set that I want my monster to have, and then I would pick a hunter from the community for each skill Someone that really, really excels at that skill. So, without any further ado, let's make a monster. Movement is one of, if not the it's most really important sad. thing in Hunt. It determines how hard you are to hit, how quickly you get around the map, how predictable your rotations are, and most importantly, how good you are at flanking hunters. And there is no one who can rival the movement of Gunsmack. It literally looks like he's skating the way he glides around compounds without losing any momentum. And it's not just his movement that separates him from other hunters, it's his vision. This man pioneered the life of Meta. He discovered nearly every well-known, hard-to-reach spot in Hunt. If there's a cheeky spot that doesn't seem accessible, he can get there. And it's entirely thanks to his skilled movement and vision for pushing Hunt's boundaries. Ooh. Ooh, man. Have you ever been in a gunfight and felt completely oppressed by the enemy? No matter where you position or what angle you peek, they're there. They give you zero room to breathe and you're left with no options but to face them or just get run over. That is called pressure. And the greatest hunter at applying pressure is Rakta. You've probably heard the term Shift W. Well, Rakta is the god of Shift Wing people and actually making it work. He's the Terminator. He's constantly fighting, rarely retreating, and almost always coming out on top. His skill set covers every aspect of Hunt, and many in the community consider him the greatest of all time, but it's his ability to apply pressure that I find most impressive. Please. I'm okay, I'm okay. Congratulations. You're officially part of the band. Welcome to the club, buddy. 
Okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. Is that pushing you? Is that pushing you too? Yeah, just fall back. Yep. Is that like key already on the other body? One dead. Nice shot. Nice. Take doctor, some sort of stuff. Who did you kill? Kate Prodigal. Okay. Uh, last one. Last one is legendary red shirt. Hit him. Got him. Nice. Rotating is an essential skill in Hunt Showdown. For those who don't fully understand what a rotation is, it's essentially your default position that evolves as things happen around you. It's a form of repositioning, but it's not just repositioning. It's about constantly assessing your situation and then improving your position accordingly. Great hunters understand and use rotations every match, but the best hunters, like Witty, take it a step further. You see, Witty doesn't just rotate effectively. He uses his understanding of rotations to predict where enemies are and where they will be throughout fights. So lots of his kills are him just knowing where an enemy is going to be, placing his crosshair there, and simply waiting for the enemy to run into it. It is an elegant way of using an enemy's good positioning against them. No. They call him Spitfire. Ultimately, Hunt is a shooter. While you can rely on other skills to win fights, you can only rely on them for so long before you're in a situation where you must rely on your aim to win a fight. When you find yourself in that situation, pray that you're not fighting fail spawner. This man's raw aim is simply unmatched. He's widely known for being the first player to hit Prestige 50 and Prestige 100, the first Bayou Bowl champion alongside Maluk, and having his own wanted poster in the game. But what separates him from everyone else is just how consistently disgusting his shots are. When the other gods of Hunt pop off, it still looks human. But when fail pops off, it straight up looks like an aim lock. Actually terrible. There's no one else in Hunt that aims like this guy. They're all dead. I feel like if I push that fucking tower, I'll have better angle. Oh, there, there. Oh, that's a nasty one to lead. But not impossible to lead. Hunters with scoped weapons are terrifying. If, if you don't also have a scoped weapon, it feels like you can't even fight back. Like your only options are push, run, or hide, and hope they don't kill you. Fortunately, most snipers uh, need you to stand still in order to headshot you, and plenty of them have trouble finding you if you reposition, which makes dealing with snipers at least manageable. However, all that goes out the window when you're dealing with a sniper like Vlambos. It's almost like the scope is an extension of his retina, like it's part of his eyeball. His aim is incredibly steady when he's scoped in, and he understands rotations and, and repositioning so well that he's always looking in the right spot at the right time. Combine that with complete understanding of bullet velocity and you've got a sniper that can track and kill you anywhere.
my body. For those who don't know, quickscoping is an ancient video game technique where you line up a target in the middle of your screen and then quickly aim down the scope of your gun and shoot. This technique allows you to shoot your gun as fast as a hip fire, but with no bloom and all the accuracy of a scoped in shot. The trick is, it's not easy to do. It requires quick reflexes and perfect understanding of the crosshair placement on your screen. By far, the craziest quick scopes I've seen in Hunt all come from one guy, Psychotic Clown. <laughs> Let's fucking go, baby! Find here. Three. And. Yeah. Another one, though? Yeah, that's one right in front of him. Yeah, right in front of him. He's dead. Oh! Good shot. The other guy's further. Pretty ping where? Up Thank here. You. Up here. Dead. Oh! Ooh, Bree going loco! Damn, bro! <laughs> right? Quick scopes are cool, no doubt. But my personal favorite shooter technique is the flick shot. For those who don't know, a flick shot is when you perform a very fast crosshair movement onto your target and shoot. The purpose of the technique is to mitigate the impact of the target's movement on your aim and to dispatch the target as fast as possible. Bree is a flicking freak. I almost think she's most dangerous when she's not looking at you because her flick is so fast and so accurate. What's most impressive though is that she's willing to go for flicks even with weapons that only have one shot, like her signature Springfield. So if you ever shoot a weird sister in the back and she spins 180 Nine. degrees on you and immediately blows your head off. It's probably Bree. I'm fucking nuts, man. Watch out that cross. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Oh. The thing I love most about Hunt is that every PvP encounter is an opportunity to express yourself and be creative. By far, the craftiest, most creative hunter is Nino. It's basically the stuff of legend at this point. He can kill you with anything in the game. Any weapon, any melee, with his fist, with a flare, with a decoy, even with a lantern. He wins unwinnable fights, and he does it in ways you never expect. But like you can never write him off, no matter the situation. My theory is that most of his thought process while playing Hunt is actually pretty standard. But when a fight begins, he empties his mind and becomes water. Like you can't predict what he's going to do because even he doesn't know what he's going to do. His actions and decisions become totally fluid and I think it's what makes his play so creative and special. It's like Nino is an artist that has no idea what he's gonna paint. And every match is a blank canvas and a chance for him to paint a masterpiece. Shit. Again, I'm gonna nade, open the window, he's gonna jump out. Ready? Sometimes our insecurities just get the better of us. It can cause you to be indecisive or hesitate to take shots and ultimately get you killed. But one hunter who seems completely immune to these insecurities is Archie, the most confident hunter I have ever seen. What makes Archie's confidence noteworthy is it 
seems to power him up and elevate his performance beyond his normal level. When he really starts feeling himself in a fight, it's over. Like whatever he has to do to win the fight, he's gonna do it. It's insane. A confident Archie is an unstoppable force wait, wait, that can ready, manifest ready. wins against all odds. Oh, He's gonna peek from here, watch. You ready? I hear, I hear water behind me, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Hello? Game knowledge is a very broad term. It encompasses essentially everything about the game. We all have some degree of game knowledge, but there are levels to this shit. And Hornet is on another level. The first time I played with Hornet, I casually mentioned that I was having a rough prestige and I was pretty low on cash. He said, okay, we'll loot some cash registers, that's fine. I thought that this meant we would loot any cash registers that we stumbled upon. But what it really meant was that Hornet would check every cash register spawn location at every compound on every map because he knows where they all are. Then he asked me if I wanted to check the blueprint spawns as well. I immediately realized he was a huge fucking nerd, and we eventually started talking about the lore. Now, the thing about hunt lore is that very few people know it well. Even hunt nerds are either a little rusty on it, they don't understand it, or they never even cared to learn it. But Hornet knows everything about it, from legendary hunter backstories, to the history of the compound, to why the world of hunt is the way it is. His game knowledge covers everything. He knows all the details about weapons, monsters, traits, unique interactions, all of it off the top of his head. It's actually insane. I, I don't say this lightly. Hornet is the encyclopedia of Hunt Showdown. He's also cracked. Super good player. Yeah, Flash bombs are as unique as they are powerful. They set up plays and pushes better than any other throwable in the game, and they brutally punish bad positioning. When you're fighting a high level hunt player and they have a flash bomb, you're in trouble. But when you're fighting Maluk and he has a flash bomb, you're just fucked. This guy's flashing technique is practically flawless. He never flashes himself, and he almost always blinds the target. Perhaps the only weakness in his flash game is that he has a tendency to play with his food, and that can backfire. But, you know, he's a streamer, he's trying to make entertaining content, so it's kind of a win-win, you know? It, it's like a, it's a funny clip if nothing goes wrong, but it's an even funnier clip if it turns into a disaster. Regardless, Maluk's flashes are the best in the game, and if you don't have an escape plan ready when you hear the flash coming, your best bet is to just shoot wildly all around you and hope you get lucky.
Oh, man. The best feeling in Hunt is clutching. Overcoming the odds and saving the day just feels amazing. I think a big part of what makes it feel so good is that it's hard to do. Lots of things make clutching hard. You might be nervous, you might experience like a dip in confidence, and just the overall disadvantage you're at in a clutch situation. So it's no surprise that the god of clutching doesn't even view it like that at all. Delaney, formerly known as Lord James Delaney, did a video series on how to clutch, and he even said that being in a 1v3 situation is in no way a disadvantage, and that you can easily reverse a situation if you make the right choices during the rotations. I think it speaks for itself that Delaney doesn't even view being in a 1v3 as a disadvantage. This is probably why he's so calm in these situations. You see, the way he approaches 1v3s is to turn them into a series of 1v1s instead, and to focus more on defensive repositioning after a kill rather than covering the body. His philosophy on 1v3s and his belief that the odds aren't even against him make Delaney an insanely clutch player that thrives when his partners go down. And there you have it. My monster is complete. It moves like Gunsmack, applies pressure like Rakta, rotates like Witty, it aims like Fail Spawner, snipes like Vombas, quick scopes like Clown, flicks like Bree, has the creativity of Nino, the confidence of Archie, the knowledge of Hornet, the flash technique of Maluk, and the clutch of Delaney. If there was really a hunter out there with this set of skills, it would be, without a doubt, the most terrifying monster in Hunt. Lastly, I just want to give a massive thank you to the hunters that let me use their clips and talk about them in this video. You are all legends, and it is an honor to share the field of battle with you. And thanks to everyone who watched the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, please give it a like and tell me in the comments how you would make your monster. I'm curious what skills and hunters I may have left out. If you want to see more videos, click that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and I will see you all in the next one.